Uh, I'm a big fan of starting on time, so that's exactly what we're going to do this evening in respect of your time and, of course, our, our staff uh, who is here tonight to offer to you our program of studies. Um, there will be uh, a number of questions that will be answered tonight uh, as how to do things, how to go about things, some opinions that can certainly be shared to get you off on the right foot. Um, it is my hope that, that uh, this presen presentation this evening is enlightening, it's very helpful and informative. Uh, however, if you feel as though you have a good handle on the situation, if, you, if this is just a refresher for you, um, you know, please take it for what it's worth and then bring that information home and try to help your student craft the best possible uh, experience for their freshman year. Uh, as we all know, it was an extraordinarily important uh, time in, in our lives. Uh, to, to get it right, because uh, you don't get a second time around. Um, I would like to highlight a few staff that are here to help along with this presentation. Uh, Mr. Stephen Goldman uh, and Ms. Amy Byrne from our guidance department. Dr. Melanie Gates is here uh, from our central office. And we also have Mr. James Michael, an institution unto himself, uh, who is here to speak a little bit on our Russian program. Uh, and, and we're just really excited to offer this information to you, and we hope that we, uh, we, we offer it clearly and concisely and you find it all very helpful. Uh, it's my mission tomorrow to make this PowerPoint uh, presentation available to you online uh, on our guidance department tab on our website. Um, you didn't miss any pamphlets, any papers, that there weren't any up there, and that's quite all right, because everything will be available to you uh, tomorrow on our website, so you can uh, revisit it as much or as little as you need. Uh, but without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mr. Stephen Goldman to set our, our night ago. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for coming. Sean, can you hear me? Okay. Thank you for coming. Uh, we have to use the mic because we're recording this. Uh, hopefully putting it on our website, so we didn't want to use it, but we are using it. Um, can everybody in the back hear me? Okay. So we're here to talk a little bit about course selection for the upcoming school year. Uh, one of our counselors is uh, out sick with the flu and couldn't be here tonight. Uh, and that is uh, Ashley Baron Fontaine. She works with the middle of the alphabet. Her, uh, we'll start with the beginning of the alphabet. Ms. Byrne works with students whose last names begin with A through E. And then Ms. Uh, Baron Fontaine has F through M, and I have N through Z. So if your names fall in those areas, we're the people that you need to, to see if you have any questions. Um, for those of you that are in eighth grade, your counselors in the eighth grade will be helping you with course selection, and there'll be a point in the spring where they'll turn it over to us. But for now, if you have any questions, um, direct them towards them, and if they have questions, they'll direct them towards us. So the guy, a quick word before we get into the course selection. Uh, for those of you who are new to the high school, our uh, guidance, uh, comprehensive guidance curriculum program includes an advisory uh, that meets um, roughly every other month for about uh, a half hour or so. Um, in that advisory, we start preparing the students for life after high school. Uh, we do a lot of career and uh, planning and for those that are interested in going off to college, uh, developing a plan to uh, best prepare them, whether it's academically or just um, you know, putting resumes together and getting ready for the college search process. Tonight's agenda, we're going to be um, talking about graduation requirements, um, course requirements by grade level, the different levels or academic pathways, um, AP course offerings, program of studies, and um, how to online, schedule online, and we have some brand new course offerings that uh, Dr. Gates is gonna talk about tonight also. So we have three different academic levels, college preparatory, meets or exceeds all academic requirements and educational frameworks, um, environment is more independent focused, prepares students to attend four-year colleges. That's an important piece. That's the lowest level that we offer. A lot of people think, oh, I can't take college prep, I won't get into a decent school. You can take all college prep courses if that's the level you should be at and still get into a competitive level four-year college. Uh, we just, we don't offer non-college prep courses here, so that's a good thing. Uh, then we have honors, which are more rigorous. Uh, students work more independently, um, and there's much more in-depth thought. You're gonna have less multiple choice and, and more uh, 
essay types of um, assessments. And then advanced placement uh, courses allow students to take um, the AP exam at the end of the year and possibly get college credit. And the AP program is growing um, quite a bit over the last few years and we're really excited in the direction it's going in. We'll talk a little bit more about AP in a little bit. Project Success is a, another program that we have here. It started last year with the ninth grade, and this year it's ninth and 10th grade. And it's for students who have had low MCAS scores or have just had some struggles over the years, and it's an opportunity to try to get them up to speed at the high school and prepare them for the MCAS exams, uh, the biology exam in ninth grade and the ELA and math in 10th in grade. Each of the, uh, this, uh, it's a five period schedule as opposed to our traditional four period schedule. Each of the courses, the three courses is 45 minutes in, instead of an 80 minute block. In grade nine, those three courses are English one, algebra one, biology, all at the college prep level, and they run for the whole year instead of one semester. And then in grade 10, it's English two, geometry, US history one, again at this college prep level, and those also run for the whole semester. So this is what a traditional schedule looks like here at the high school, four blocks. And if a student is in project success, what we do is we squeeze three classes into the first two blocks of the day. And those courses run the whole year. Uh, so they get plenty of instruction time, and then they go back into the mainstream um, for the last two blocks of the day. Credits. We have different courses, so a semester-long course is five credits. Quarter-long courses are two and a half credits. Year-long courses, which are AP courses, are seven and a half or 10, depending on the AP course. Some of them meet um, every day for the whole year. Some of them meet every day for the first half of the year and every other day, second half of the year. And then the project success courses are 6.66 credits. Promotion to the next grade level, Freshman to sophomore year, you need to earn a minimum of 32 and a half credits. You can earn up to 40. Sophomore year uh, to junior year, 65. Junior to senior year, 97 and a half. And to graduate, you need to have 136 credits. And these are our graduation requirements. You need four years of English. Each class is worth five credits for 20. Um, 50, uh, three years of math, but it is strongly recommended to take a fourth year of math if you're looking at a four-year competitive school. Oh, it's going to be four. That's right. It's going to be four for the eighth grade. It's changing for the class of 2022. Um, but for those of you that are currently here at the high school, if you're considering a four-year competitive four-year school, you want four years of math. They want, you, they want to see that you've taken four years and that you've taken math your senior year also. Um, science, three lab sciences, usually it's biology, chemistry, and then you have a variety to choose from after that. World history, too, is usually the freshman social studies course, and then US 1 sophomore year, and US 2 junior year, or AP. Uh, world language, uh, two years minimum for the same language. Uh, health, wellness, physical education, a quarter every year for a total of 10 credits. Uh, computer technology, um, and the course has changed to, what's the name of the course next year? Yeah, back in when? It's in, the, it's in the presentation, you'll see it in a few minutes. We, uh, we had the course name just changed. Um, and then you need five credits in fine or performing arts, that's art, theater, music, um, and it can be a combination or it could be the same, it doesn't have, it could be like, you could take two art courses if you wanted. Um, and. Um, and then 41 credits of electives for a total of 136. Um, students who um, fall in the needs improvement category in math, on the uh, math MCAS, you are you're required to take a fourth year of math. Starting with the class of 2020, we now have the community service graduation requirement also. Uh, we have a coordinator here at the school and um, Who's going to be, who's going to tr who tracks the hours, make sure it is a graduation requirement, so it's nothing that would be in the schedule, so you need to make sure that you're, you're covering um, the hours that you need um, in order to receive your high school diploma. 
So this is what a typical freshman schedule would look like. Look like. English, um, algebra or geometry, depending on what you, uh, you've taken in eighth grade. World history two, biology, a language, a quarter of phys ed, a, computer, a quarter of computers, and then it doesn't have to be a fine or performing art. A lot of the students like to get part of that requirement out of the way freshman year. It could be something else. Um, if you were, if you're interested in it, and uh, that's uh, anything that you when you when you get onto Aspen to pick your courses, what you'll notice it, it, the courses that you see in front of you are only for your grade level. Um, so freshmen can't pick an AP course; it won't show up when you get into Aspen. Typical sophomore schedule: English, geometry or algebra two, U.S. history one, chemistry, world language, PE, and then you get to choose a couple of electives. And for juniors, English, Algebra two or Pre-Calculus, U.S. History two, um, a third year of a lab science, quarter of his ed, and then more electives. And then senior year, English four, we don't have a specific English four course. We have several different choices for seniors. Um, so we couldn't fit them all in the box, so we just put English four, but we have a whole bunch of different Englishes you can choose from as a senior. Uh, senior level math, and then the quarter of his head, and you can see lots of electives. <clears throat> AP Capstone is something that is relatively new here, um, and it is the opportunity, in addition to taking AP courses, if you take six courses, which would include the research course and the seminar course, um, you could walk away not only with a high school diploma, with an AP Capstone diploma, which comes from the College Board. It's still a relatively new concept. There's not a lot of schools that are offering it. A lot of high schools were one of the first in the state to be offering it. Um, colleges um, are looking at AP courses, whether it's through the capstone program or just taking AP. Um, if you have more questions about AP capstone, see your guidance counselor, and they can fill you in on the details and, uh, it, and see if it would work with the schedule that you were trying to create for the next four years. And these are a list of the AP offerings that we have here at the high school. And we do have a brand new AP course coming this year and there it is, AP Psychology is starting next fall. And we're really excited that that is happening here. And now I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Byrne, who's going to talk about the program of studies and course selection. Thank you. Good evening. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about the um, program of studies, um, which is the book of courses that we offer here at Middleborough High School. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the new courses um, that you want to look for in the book. Um, Program of Studies, we strongly encourage all students and parents to read this book. Um, it is a wealth of information. It will give you information about um, a lot of what Mr. Goldman talked about, um, graduation requirements and whatnot, including the community service. Um, and it also gives very good, nice, descriptions of all the courses we offer as well as the levels of each course and what um, is expected for each level of each course. All right, so the way to find the program of studies is by going to the Middleborough High School web, uh, web page and you should be able to find it right, right on the, um, the home page there, okay? Okay, so Mr. Goldman um, mentioned that we do have some new courses and new programming um, for next year. And so at this time, I'm actually going to introduce you to Dr. Melanie Gates, who is going to talk about um, a program that we are hoping to get here at Middleborough, and it is called Project Lead the Way. So I'm gonna allow her to explain that to you. Thank you, Mrs. Barry. Uh, so as Mrs. Barron said, um, we're hoping to be able to offer some courses under the umbrella of Project Lead the Way. It's all grant dependent. Um, our grant application is actually due on Friday and we should know before March if we earn the grant. 
Um, it's an exciting opportunity to um, embrace a very rigorous national curriculum um, from Project Lead the Way. Um, there are multiple pathways that Project Lead the Way offers, and there are two that Middleborough High School is hoping to adopt, and that is a biomedical science pathway and an engineering pathway. Um, the biomedical science pathway is focused in on students who would be interested in pursuing um, a career or a college major in the area of biology or medicine, or even if you just have an interest in, in the human body. It would be a four-course um, sequence where we would um, hope that students would enter right into their freshman year and continue through with a cohort of students through their senior year. Um, the courses are real-world, um, hands-on, and really rigorous in terms of the expectations that they have for students. So hopefully if we earn the grant, um, we will be able to, um, starting next year in the 2018-19 school year, offer the first course in the sequence for a uh, Principles of Biomedical Science program. Um, myself and a couple of our teachers here from the high school recently visited Plymouth South and Plymouth North who've been hosting um, the biomedical science program going into their third year. And we were able to talk to kids that were um, in the program. And um, the, the sentiments that the kids expressed were extremely positive. Um, they did say that it is a really challenging um, curriculum to be exposed to. But what they found is that the nature of the program allows kids to really collaborate with one another and solve real world problems. So for example, in, the, in this introductory course, Principles of Biomedical Science, the students essentially conduct um, an investi a criminal investigation to determine why somebody had passed away. And it puts the students through um, you know, things such as going to the crime scene and analyzing it and collecting data, um, collecting evidence, and then analyzing that evidence for students to then determine why this person did indeed pass away. So it's really taking the principles of medicine, of the human body, and really integrating it into um, a more, uh, I think, enriching experience from our student, for our students. Our hope is that starting with um, this year's incoming freshman class, that our students will transition up through each of these courses in um, this pathway. Um, in each of the pathways, the final course, um, in this case it's biomedical innovation, is a capstone course where students are going to be able to conduct research and partner with mentors in the biomedical science field. It really is something that if you're a student interested in this area, it would be something very um, you know, positive to take and would really make your um, resume and transcript stand out from others. The engineering pathway, similar to biomedical science, it's meant to be hands-on, engaging, real-world situations. Um, it will also be a four-course sequence where we hope our students um, transition in the four courses together as a cohort. Um, we think the cohort model will be important because the students will be able to collaborate and support one another throughout the program. Um, in the engineering pathway, again, we hope to start uh, next year with the introduction to engineering design and um, pursue through the four course pathway um, with the final course being engineering design and development which is again a capstone course. What's great, another great opportunity with Project Lead the Way is their partnership with College Board and advanced placement in particular. Um, students will have an opportunity to earn um, a national really endorsement on their diploma by completing um, certain aspects of advanced placement and Project Lead the Way. So for example, if a student wanted to earn an endorsement for engineering, they would need to take a total of three courses. One would have to be advanced placement, one would have to be one of the four courses in the Project Lead the Way pathway, and then the third course could be either an AP or a Project Lead the Way course. Students, in addition to having to take those courses, would have to achieve passing scores. As Mr. Goldman had mentioned, advanced placement, there are advanced placement exams. It's rated on a one through five scale, with five being the highest. And earning college credit, the potential for earning college credit is based upon earning a minimum score of three. So any score of three, four, or five is the great potential of students earning college credit. That combined with demonstrating proficiency in the Project Lead the Way courses um, is done through um, taking their end of course assessments and earning a proficient rating on that. So a combination of three courses from AP and Project Lead the Way and demonstrating proficiency on those exams will earn the students the opportunity to have this 
um, nationally recognized endorsement on their diplomas from Project Lead the Way. Um, and similarly for biomedical science, it's just the number of AP offerings that fit into the biomedical science pathway are a bit limited. Um, so as I was saying, students receive that recognition um, for being able to complete um, the course requirements from Project Lead the Way. You know, we're really trying to, in preparation for opening a new high school come January of 2021, we really want to start to, to move the needle with the courses that we offer here and change the experience for our students starting now. And we feel that Project Lead the Way is going to be a great opportunity for us. We're really hopeful we earn the grant to be able to support this program. Um, if we don't earn the grant, we're going to come back to the, to the, to the drawing board and, and figure out how we can make this happen for our kids because we feel that these are really two um, intriguing pathways for our students. We see a lot of our students that graduate pursuing STEM-based careers and majors, and we want to be able to um, you know, support that further by offering rigorous and competitive curriculum for our students to be exposed to. So thank you for that, and I'll turn it back over to Mrs. Byrne. Oh, okay, all right, I'll just do this. Oh, I should know it, I did teach here. And I'm in school here, hey, what's up, Um So thank you. Thank you. All right, so that's ex exciting. Um, I don't want to say news because it's not definite yet, but being hopeful, yes. Okay, so um, in the program of studies, like I was talking about that book that's online for you on our MHS website, um, you will see some new courses in there. If you're just coming up with your first child to the high school um, right now, um, you may not have looked at this book before, but there may be some upperclassmen here. Um, or parents of, and so uh, these are some of the courses that we're offering um, next year. So in the social studies department, uh, Mr. Goldman had mentioned the AP psychology. We have um, psychology at the college prep level, and now we're, we're expanding and offering it at the AP level. And that's open to grades 11 and 12. We're also offering a um, social studies elective called Human Geography, and that's open to grades 10, 11, and 12. In math, we have one new elective, and that is SAT Prep Math Review, and that is open to grade 11 students only, and that's in preparation to take the college entrance exam called the SAT um, during the spring of their junior year. Fine and Performing Arts, we have Comic Book Art, um, and Beyond the Selfie, um, those both have prerequisites of Art Foundations. So if you've already taken Art Foundations your freshman year, um, then you can move on and take either of those. In the, the um, theater department, we have um, writing, playmaking, and devising for stage and screen. So I think you're writing your own um, shows and whatnot. The prereq for that is Art of Theater. Okay. Um, computer technology. The technology integration and research in the 21st century class is now called Computer Programming and Design Essential. The curriculum will be changing a little bit, um, so stay tuned on that. We have the AP Capstone. The students currently enrolled in AP Seminar will automatically be enrolled in AP Research for next year. Um, in um, math, AP Calculus BC, we have a half year course, we also have a full year course. So if you took AP Calc AB this year, you can take the half year of BC Calc next year as a senior. Um, if you never took a AP Calc AB, but you, you have, you've completed pre-calculus and you want to take calculus, your choices are AP AB or BC. Um, we are opening up Calc Honors next year to grade 12 only. We haven't offered that in a couple of years, so it's coming back. Um, it is closed to students who have completed AP Calculus AB, though. Um, consumer economics, um, which is learning to uh, budget credit cards, checking accounts, etc. It was only open to grades 11 and 12 this past year or two. Next year we're reopening it to grade 10 as well as 11 and 12. Financial literacy is a um, math course in our math department. It is only open to grade 12 
and it is, again, it's um, more, co covers more than the Consumer Act and Personal Finance class, but it is, does cover mortgages, loans, credit cards, checking accounts, and all that real life applications stuff. Okay, before I move on, um, I do want to um, introduce Jim Michael. He is um, the Russian teacher at Middleborough High School. He's been here for many, many years, and he has a phenomenal program. Um, Russian is one of our foreign languages um, that we offer. We also have Spanish and French, and um, I just want to introduce Jim to you because he's going to speak about his his program, and um, hopefully some of the incoming freshmen here will sign up. All right. Sorry to steal the mic real quick. I don't get a chance to do this often, and I want to take this brief opportunity to dote on one of my colleagues over here. I've had the pleasure of working with Jim for the last 16 years, but a uh, little known fact, many, many, uh, is 43. 43 years, he's been a, a licensed teacher in the state of Massachusetts, 74, 74, Jim, correct me, I'm right, I'm right, I did my research, 1974, and his program is as strong today as it was when he took it over from his mentor many, many moons ago, um, so I'd love a, a nice round of applause for Jim Michael. Thank you, Mr. Dazel, and Dobry Vecher Tavarishti. That means good evening, comrades. Uh, parents, if your child were to visit the corridors of a Russian high school tomorrow, uh, they'd find that about 70 to 80 percent of the students there would be capable of having a workable conversation in English with them. By contrast, <clears throat> The, but this is partly because of the fact that Russians start foreign language study in the fourth grade. And the number one choice for Russian kids at every level is English, to learn English. Partly because they want to know what the lyrics of the rock, American rock groups are, that seriously. But then again, that leads to other things. Uh, by contrast, the study of the, the condition of the study of Russian in American high schools is woefully lacking. Now get this, and I'm not making these figures up. There are approximately 50,000 high schools in the United States, public and private, most of them public. Only 70 of them have a Russian program. 70 out of 50,000. Four high schools in Massachusetts have a Russian program. Two of them, public high schools, Newton South and Middleborough, Middleborough High School. The other two are uh, Phillips Andover, the private school of the Bush family, and Buckingham, Brown and Nichols in Cambridge, two private schools. So a total of four high schools in Massachusetts. The so-called leader of education in the 50 states. Uh, the same Massachusetts that has scrapped its Russian major program uh, at its flagship campus, the University of Massachusetts, back in the 1990s. Um, what does this mean for your child? Well, it gives your child the opportunity to achieve in a foreign language that is now deemed as critical by United States government and American businesses. Now, college admissions offices use many academic criteria and standards in judging who they will accept, recognizing that AP and honors courses are certainly among them. But a high school transcript that has three or four years of Russian sporting on it, three or four years of solid achievement in Russian, never crosses their desks. This is a chance for an incoming high school student to earn a glowing addition to their records come college application time. In Russian, in Russian one, your child will learn to read and write in Cyrillic. That's to read and write in Russian. That only takes about three to four weeks. 
have learned how to conduct detailed Russian conversation that emphasize many of the commonly used daily life expressions. They'll learn songs like Happy Birthday and Old MacDonald uh, in Russian. In Russian too, your child will expand conversational skills and reading and writing skills. In Russian 3, your child will learn how to say the United States flag salute in Russian. And we'll, we will build upon previous years of skills. In Russian 4, your child will expand their Russian learning experience through, uh, one of the ways will be through a video series which follows four Russian high school friends and their families and the things that they like to do and the decisions that they have to make uh, in their senior year of high school. Also, senior year in Russian 4, we learn the background of the Bolshevik Revolution, the final days of Tsar Nicholas, 100 years ago this year. Uh, this is the 100th anniversary of the Bolshevik Revolution. Uh, through the classic and very historically accurate film, Nicholas and Alexandra. The world that we live in would likely be a very different place today if Russia's last star could have held back the tide of communism 100 years ago. Um, I invite you to, uh, to take a flyer. I brought Mr. Mr. Dizel has some flyers over here. Uh, anyone that would, that would like one, please feel free to take one. Thank you all for your attention. These flyers will be available on your way out right over here. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I have, I've worked here for a very long time, and the students who take Mr. Michael's class, they love, they love his class, and they take it for four years because they love Mr. Michael, and they love what he talks about in learning the Russian language, culture, and history. So I um, couldn't say anything negative about you because nobody ever asked to leave your class. <laughs> they all like it. All right, so thank you. Moving on, um, more academics. Um, we have here at the high school a dual enrollment program. We have a um, contract with Massasoit Community College, and we have um, what's called the James Braga Pathway to Business, um, which was created um, several years ago. And what that is is students have the opportunity in grades 10, 11, and 12 to go over to Massasoit in Middleborough and take a business course. Um, we have Intro to Business, principles of marketing, financial accounting, and personal finance. So students can earn <coughs> college credit as well as high school credit for graduation all at the same time, free of charge, which is a heck of a deal because if anyone's taken a college course recently, it's very expensive, okay? So free of charge to our students. And as long as you earn a 74% in the course, you get the college credit for it, okay? And you, you have a college transcript. And you can actually transfer those credits to the college that you end up at after high school. Okay, so this is the last part of the presentation this evening. This is the technical side of things. Um, so you're going to be doing your course selection in our Aspen um, portal, okay? So everybody was issued last Thursday, um, as long as your child was in school, whether it was here at the middle school in eighth grade, um, they were all issued a packet. Um, they were issued a, a piece of paper with instructions, a um, piece of paper with a label on it that had your child's name on it, as well as their login if they've never used Aspen before. No login if you've ever logged in. And if you've ever logged in, you probably have your login and you're all set and you can log in. And if not, if all else fails, you always have um, Katie Godine who you can email her um, and ask her to enable your account or redo your password or whatever needs to happen. 
So that's what you need to do is you, you came, well, you came home with a packet of information with all your instructions and what you need to do. And you have until the portal opened on um, the 12th at midnight and it is open until Friday the 26th at midnight, okay? So you must make all your course selections within that time frame. If you don't make course selections, your guidance counselor has to choose for you, okay? So you want to make the choices because we might put you in something that would be the last thing that you want to take ever, okay? So please choose your courses. Please think about the leveling that you're choosing. Um, if you have questions about it at all, please see your current guidance counselor, okay? That's, we're here to help with that, all right? If you need, if, if you feel like you're not sure about a level, please see, like if you're wondering about math, should I take honors or should I take college prep? Ask your teacher. They can, they can tell you what they recommend, okay? All right, so course selection, back to the portal. So you're going to um, go to the Middleborough High School webpage and click on the Aspen link at the top of the district website to get to the login. This is what it's going to look like. You're going to type in your login, your password, and log on. Okay, and then you're going to come to your, your sort of home page and you're going to click on the top tab that says my info okay then on the side you're going to look until you see requests and you're going to click on requests and then it's going to bring you to where you can make all your selections okay so um you're going to make some primary primary requests so that would be there. So primary requests are the things like your math for science, social studies, foreign language, and the electives that you really want to have. Like I'm in the band and I want to continue band. Um, I want to take drawing for beginners. That's, that is my number one, okay? So you're going to do that and you're going to um, pick until you have um, at least 40 credits, okay? Then you're going to go to the alternate, which is right here, and we're asking everybody to choose six alternates so that we have backups in case you don't get what you um, what your your priorities are. Okay, so once you're in a subject area, so this is the foreign language, the world language, um, you want to simply check or click on the select box next to the course for which you want to choose. So you just click on it, there will be a check mark there, and then you're gonna click on, okay. And that will save that um, choice for you. Okay, it does say that you should post your requests when you are done making them. Um, if you don't post, or if you po if you click on post and it says that it won't let you post, don't worry because it's automatically saving. It's like a, a Google Doc, like it's always just constantly saving. So it is saved even if it's telling you that it's not, okay? But if you feel, if you're nervous about it, please see your counselor, okay? So the alternates, you want to choose six. Um, please rank them in order of preference. So um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so number one would be obviously the one that you would want to choose if um, that's your first backup. Number two, your second. And number six is your last. Do not rank two electives with the same number um, unless you feel the same way about them, you know, like. I'm equally as happy to have astronomy as, as I am oceanography, okay? Because um, the computer will just choose one or the other. Um, so that is alternates. Um, there have been questions in the past. Um, people have clicked on the elective section and then all they've seen is, is this. 
page right here, and they've said, but my electives aren't there. There's only history electives on there. I want band. Where's band? Where's art? Okay, so you need to click on this arrow right there, and that will bring you to another page of electives, and just keep clicking and clicking until you find your electives. Okay? All right, so the timeline, you got your information. Um, the portal opened for high school students. The guidance counselors will be available all four lunches in the cafeteria starting tomorrow for the rest of the week um, to help with any students who want to come up to us and have questions or concerns about their scheduling. In late February, probably, probably more like March, you will get course request verification sheets. They'll be um, sent home. That would that will just be a list of the courses that you signed up for in these two weeks. Um, it won't be your schedule. It will just be you signed up for this. Is this? Are you sure this is what you want? Okay. Did you make a typo or, or would I click on the wrong thing? Okay. So we just want to make sure it's correct. Um, did you look at it and you're missing a math? You know. Okay. And then in May, mid-May, early June, the schedules will be um, drafted. They will be reviewed by guidance and reviewed with students. We will call students down who are at the high school if they have conflicts. This happens in the upper grades a lot. Um, and in June, the, um, your, list, your list of courses that you actually got, okay, not the teachers, not the um, and not the block of the day that you'll have with us, but the list of classes that you are scheduled for will go home with you. I think it's the last day of school, okay? So, thank you, and um, do we have any questions? I have a question. Sure. Um, coming into ninth grade, now if she wants to take, you know, there's seven required courses already down here, and then she wants to stay in, like, say, band. And, but she also wants to take in engineering. There's no room for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so you can only take a max of 40 credits. So if you're taking five core courses, that's 25 credits, plus the gym, plus the computer, um, that's 30 and then 35 would be banned, and then you could so fit. If she from, wanted to do the engineering pathway for the new thing, she'd have to drop banned. Is that what you're saying? No, it will fit because the gym and the computer class that they have to take are only two and a half credits. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the computer and the gym are two and a half credits each. So how does the two and a half credit, I guess I'm confused about the two and a half credit thing then. Is that like a shorter class or so is that? Those are 45 day courses uh, as opposed to a nine day course, which is a five credit course. Okay. So um, a 45 day course could run one of two ways. It can go every other day for the whole semester or it could go every day for one quarter. Okay, so, and they don't, not every class meets every single block. So it is, is a little, Manipulating the schedule and try okay. to make it's like a puzzle. You try to make all this stuff. Fit. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and I mean sometimes we have students and families have to make choices. Um, like some students we've had take a half year of band. It's not ideal, um, but sometimes it depends depends on what your pathway is. Depends on what's important to you. Um, sometimes we have students. You know, I mean, you, you would have the option of waiting a year to take the foreign language, but it could end up bogging you down in the end. So it's like, you know, and, and this is all going to be new territory if we do get this program because we haven't worked with schedules in this capacity yet because we don't have the, the program. So the freshman schedules are pretty cut and dry right now. But, um, but yeah, if you're a band, an orchestra, a kid, you know what I mean? Then it could be a tight schedule. You know, is but that, is that going to be offered? The engineering pathway is that going to be offered on the on the Aspen, or is it going to be after the grant? No, it they're they're offered. They're they're open, and you can sign up. Okay. Um, but 
it's pending, you know, the grant. So if it's if we don't get the grant, there's no no class likely next year. Which is, which is another reason why it's important to pick alternate electives. Yeah. Um, we really can't emphasize enough. I, I, every year I come across, like I'm begging, and I am begging. We don't want to pick your courses. Mm -hmm. uh, we really don't. And once the school year starts, it is very difficult to get out of a course for a variety of reasons. One, we don't like people to move. We like to move on to the next phase of the school year. But more importantly, that sometimes there's just no place to put the person. The class is full. There's not another desk in that class. Um, so we, we really want you to be thoughtful, ask questions, um, you know, let us know what we can do to help you through the process. Don't just throw a bunch of courses in the computer and say, I'll deal with it later. It'll bite you later, it really will. Um, so please, whatever we can do to help you, just let us know. And honors in college prep level, any questions about that? Honors is faster paced, more, a little more in depth, a little more, Homework maybe, study time, um, college prep still prepares you to go right off to a four-year college. Um, and so either pathway is, is fine, but um, just so you're aware, you can be in different levels in different subject areas. So if you're a kid that excels in math and you want to take honors, but English isn't your forte, you can certainly take college prep in English. Um, we sometimes, you know, a general rule of thumb is that if you're in college prep English, you probably want to be in college prep um, history, social studies. If you're in honors um, math, you can handle usually in honors science. Um, they usually go hand in hand. Okay, so any questions? In the back? So if, if we do sign up like by the 26th for one of the classes that you're not sure on the grant for and then you don't get the grant are you going to pick another class for them or that's, will you have a chance to go back in well no that's where you'll what you need to do is pick the alternates okay okay so pick six alternates and then the um, computer will just grab from those okay when it schedules okay yeah. Just wanted to add a couple comments in regards to the pathway. Um, if we're not able to successfully secure the grant, we still have programming in place that is suitable for students interested in engineering as well as students interested in biomedical science, biology, health, etc. Um, so there's opportunities, for example, if you're interested in engineering, you may wish to sign up for a technical systems one. Um, that would be something comparable to what we are hoping to offer with Project Lead the Way. We also have forensic science, we have anatomy and physiology. So we do have other opportunities that currently exist in our program of studies that would um, be similar to those pathways should we not earn the grant. So that might be some um, areas we might want to highlight when you're picking your alternate um, courses. Very good point. All right, anything else? All right, you guys want to hang out for a while? <laughs> <laughs> All right.